Hi students, so I promised you that I would calculate the percent error for our calorimetry experiment. So I want to go to the bottom of the chart where we ended up down here. And I want to walk you through how to do the percent error. So I've got to erase a tiny bit over here. So we have some room. So for that value, for the specific heat of your coins, and remember I did a piece of metal, so I crossed out coins and I put metal. What we got after our calculation was 0.9 if we use the correct sig fix. So say we did the experiment again, and we got all of these values again, and we did some calculation, and what we came up with was 0.8. Now 0.9 and 0.87 are pretty close, so those look like good values. If you've got something like 0.9 and 0.45, things that are like completely off, then you might want to do the experiment again. All right, so in order to get the average, so I know there's a lot of writing on there, but that says the average, we would add these two up and divide by two. And what we would get here for our phony experiment is 0.89. And then the experiment asks you guys to take that value and calculate the percent error. Now, I told you that we had an aluminum block and the theoretical, or in theory, what we should get uh, value for our specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.903. Now, we can look at this and go, woo, we got pretty close, so we're doing well, but let's go ahead and do the calculation. So, the equation for percent error is the absolute value of the experimental value minus the theoretical. And the, theore the theoretical value is, in theory, what you should get, okay? So if you looked it up in the book and it said that's what you should get, that's what the theoretical value is, okay? In theory, the heat capacity of aluminum is 0 0.903. Now, experimental, that's what you got in your experiment. So 0.89, we're going to move it on down here. And that's what we would put there. And then we're gonna put the theoretical value again on the bottom, which is weird for a lot of students, but that's how we do it and multiply it by 100. So our percent error would be the absolute value of 0.89 minus 0.903 and we will divide this all by 0 0.903 and you guys can add the units in there the joules divided by grams times degrees celsius for each of our, your values but that they're going to cancel out so don't worry too much so i didn't write those there so then we're going to do 0 0.89 minus 0 0.903 and that's going to give you a negative value but that's okay because anything that's in the absolute value bars, these things right here, comes out positive on the other side. So sometimes if you go online and you look up the equation for percent error, it'll have these two values switched around, but it doesn't matter as long as you have the absolute value bars there because three minus five gives you negative two and five minus three gives you positive two but if both of those answers are between absolute value bars they both come out as um, positive two now when we do this math what we're going to get is we're going to get 1.4 percent error and yay that's really good now, I don't want to see any negative numbers for your percent error because everything that's in here should come out positive, and these values down here are not going to be negative. Also, you don't need to have negative and positive percent errors because whether you're positive 2% off or negative 2% off, you're still 2% in error either way, so give a positive value for this. 
And that, my friends, is how we calculate percent error. Obviously, you will have your own values because you're doing a coin. And where you guys will find your theoretical specific heat capacities is not in a chart like this. It is in the procedure for this experiment and it'll tell you for pennies or nickels or dimes what the specific heat on that should be. So go ahead and find it. It's the bottom line on the procedure portion. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.